So, um, I'm doing the coffee cart thing, and the coffee cart business, uh, we almost got it going. <clears throat> he had seven coffee carts at uh, seven different farmer's market that he, he was ready to, to get going, and things fell through. The guy that was the investor, the Jewish guy, he uh, he lost his job and was going to lose his house. And um, so he had to move. He was going to move to New York because he just inherited a condo. His mother died. So that was over. And uh, the whole time I had been studying about coffee shops, every book I can find. <clears throat> and, um, and how to start a coffee cart business, all that stuff. And, um, I read this book about the origin of coffee shops, coffee houses, and it explained how coffee houses were used, you know, during the American revolution before that different kinds of, they were used for political purposes for people to meet and talk and assemble. And, uh, they were called the penny universities because people who weren't educated would be in there drinking coffee and people who were, and they would share and educate each other about different things. And so it was called a penny university because you'd have these conversations, educational conversations. So I started brainstorming. That was because being a petitioner, um, you know, I was thinking about the political value of that and how things came about. So I had an idea for a different kind of coffee shop and um, for political purposes with all this going on in our, our country, especially with socialism and everything else and um, monarchs, and bad real estate, bad business, bad politicians. So my idea was... Uh, you know, to kind of use it for, uh, to prevent, I had this idea for the coffee shop, so I kept it, and um, that was another, but it was just one more thing, one more business that I it was envisioning out, that, and I was already working still on all that music, music gardens, and uh, music labs, and that was going on for years, you know, going back and forth, trying to figure out some, how, what to do and how to come up with the money and how to accomplish it. And uh, my main goal the whole time, all of that stuff was going on as ministry was, you know, what was God's calling in my life? What was my ministry? Because I had 19 or at age 20, I had been anointed for ministry. I was called up on this stage in front of 4,000 people. And um, they prayed over me for God to anoint me to be a minister. So I was wondering when that was going to happen. I'm getting older. And none of the ministries, I seemed, it didn't seem right to get involved with most ministries I, I'd been involved, you know, I'd ever visited. <clears throat> Even the Catholic Church, I, was, I mean, uh, there's no way I was going to give up all my rights to be let Romans and Italians and monarchs and all that rule over me just because they tried to make that part of the religion I just think that it's totally opposite I think it's because of Christ that we have freedom that the Amer all the things the principles in America and our way of life had to do with Christ not the other way around it's uh, it was a furtherance of the gospel the American freedom not a hindrance or a rebellion the way they say um to me and i i believe that is god gave me freedom and that uh, it's against god to take it away even you know because the church needs that freedom anywhere in the world where there's no freedom that means the church isn't free and uh why would god do that so i don't believe the pope not at all. And um, I believe Catholic clergy, most of them, 
I don't believe they're harmless, a lot of them. I don't believe Catholics are all that harmless, if any. Um, I don't know what's in their mind about the United States and freedom. I don't believe them. And I don't believe that they are in the United States who they believe they are. That's just my... Uh, I'll, I'll sit there and I will sing those songs because I like them. And other than that, I don't talk to Catholics because I don't agree with them about themselves, about their families, about their work. I don't. I, I love people and everything, but how can they be monarchs in America? How did their work and their school become more than others? How did their faith in God become more than others when they don't even believe? They just totally contradict everything about that they believe. There's no tradition. Nothing. Everything's been been changed so much ever since way back. I mean, they, there was Ari, There was just all kinds of stuff in it. It's not the original faith of Christ. They just used a Rome, a city called Rome. When that place called Lost Power, they started making things up to try and make things people believe in in their power. And I don't like to do that. Even to make gods out of, of people. Fables, fate, you know, legends, myths. And I don't agree with them being um, somebody who I have to surrender or submit to that way. That I don't believe in their authority of that kind. They offend me and then pretend that it don't matter and then when you do something they don't agree with, it's a cardinal sin. People would be, uh, people could murder American if it was up to Catholic and Catholics would think that's that's okay. It's okay. They, they baptize mafias and they don't care about them. They do their weddings and they do all that and their burials just like they do anybody else's. They don't like put them away from the church like it says. It says in the Bible, you're supposed to put people out after you baptize them and they continue to sin. That way, live like the world. You're not supposed to consort with them. The Catholic Church consorts. So do a lot of evangelists still consort. Their family members get so corrupt and they still, oh, we're God's family. We're all one family. It's just, I don't agree. Lodge members, all. Um, but anyway, so I came up with that, and um, I was looking into getting out of the city, so I looked into internships on farms, all kinds of things that I could do. Uh, I looked, visited some. It was starting to seem like they were actually like legalized slave. They don't pay. They just call it an internship. They don't teach you anything. They just get you to do your. They trick a lot of college students into doing it. Young people into working for free. And um, I don't agree with it. And so I thought, no, you know, because the bigger farms, they pay really well. But the small farmers, boy, they try to trick you into working for free. So they're no, bet they're no better than a big farmer. And um, so I thought, no, I'm not going to do that, go along with it. And I didn't. And then... Uh, I decided to uh, use the carnival to try to get get out of you know the city because it traveled around and um, got a job at the fair and uh, bought a car stuff and I was going to work some carnivals fairs and and um, that uh, hippie guy he uh, the coffee coffee guy Iron Turtle he uh, Told me that uh, he wanted me to uh, go with him to pick blueberries and see if we can earn any money doing that, just for some extra cash stuff. And we tried it, and we didn't get any money. He's like, "Oh my God, how do these people earn enough money on these blueberry patches?" And I picked like the most in the whole 
bunch, you know, and I barely got any money. And um, it just wasn't a good blueberry patch, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Mexicans sure work at save. All, so I don't know how they do it. <clears throat> um, and I was picking as much as the Mexicans, you know. And uh, then, uh, so we thought, well, that's a, that's no good idea. And he just said, oh, you know, I'm so sick of all this. Let's forget it. Oh, you know, and um, he did. He just said, I'm gonna wait for my social security and move to Mexico. He said, <laughs> he was like over 50, he had a few years before he could get social security. <clears throat> so, I uh, I start, I was still reading a lot of books, I studied a whole bunch of architecture books, and I sat in the coffee shops. And uh, I met this one guy, and he was telling me about uh, he had just bought some farmland for like eighty thousand for ten acres, split it up into one acre parcels, and uh, oh no, was it? Yeah, it was something like that. He paid, he had cash, so the guy sold it to him really cheap. Um, or it was eighty. I think it was uh, eighty thousand. He ended up paying for a hundred acres and split it into ten acres parcels, and sold him eighty thousand a piece. So he had ten times his money because he had paid cash. I thought, well, how jack up the prices for of land for everybody so they can't go buy any land? Because a lot of people want, you know. I mean, that I don't like to. I don't agree. How does the land come up that much in value just so he could get rich? Whatever. And and also in the Bible, uh, Ananias, Ananias and Sapphira, I think their name is, um, God killed them when they tried, They sold their property for more than it was worth and then tried to make it right by giving to the, the apostles. And, uh, you know, they said, hey, you know, you tempted God, tempt, you know, can't tempt us or whatever or something. And then uh, they dropped dead. God, God, God killed them for tempting, tempting him to that way, you know, because they had been deceitful about the price of their property. So it's got to be pretty serious, you know. I mean, not everybody's dropping dead, but uh, there's a lot wrong in the world. So a lot of people hurt, diseased, cursed, extremely. Uh, I don't know how much of a life they can have, or what's going to happen to them on Judgment Day, but here. I don't think it's right, you know, to do that. There's also, you know, the way that Israel was, the land and stuff, and, and all the prophecies of the in the Old Testament, excuse me, in the Old Testament, and Moses, the laws of Moses, they they weren't too, uh, they couldn't sell the land for profit. It was God's, it was God's property, God's land, you know. They could, oh, I think they just. Not, I forget, I'd have to look it up again, but they could own the land, own it, but I mean, it wasn't like the communism, but they couldn't sell it for profit, just whatever its value was worth, not for profit. Like when they built properties, their houses, stuff like that, of course they could sell that for profit, but not the land itself, which... Our resources, especially water rights, all that stuff, none of that should be for profit. And you got bottling water companies, you got all kinds of stuff buying up our water. It's terrible. And uh, I'd found 18 artesian wells for sale in a 30 acre pasture on like 800,000 acres with some timber, also like 1,100 acres of timber. That was, um, you could, you know, pretty good timber profitable timber and uh, I uh, but it was cost a whole bunch it was gonna be quite a bit of money it was like not 800,000 acres. it was like 1100 acres timber 18 artesian wells and 30 pasture acres grazable pasture so for 800,000 that's what it was, eight hundred thousand dollars. Of course, I just, I was just looking at it. I thought, man, it'd be nice to come up with artesian wells. You know, I just love to have a nice freshwater spring that 
The water's as clean as, uh, you know, cleaner than bottled water, some of them. Before the bottled water companies buy them out. <laughs>